Aloha and welcome back to another game preview edition of the Ohana Packers Edition podcast. Podcast where two dudes from halfway across the world talk everything green and gold. I'm Mike and that's Iowa Joe. Joe, the Packers are looking to extend their win streak as they head into Monday Night Football in the Meadowlands against the Giants. How are you looking this matchup for the Packers this week? On paper... After taking down the defending Super Bowl champs, it, you know, you would think that this would be a cakewalk, but it was pointed out earlier by a couple people. I think I, I also heard it on uh, uh, Lombardi's bar. The Packers tend to play down to, you know, they play to their competition. So if it's good competition, they play up. If it's bad competition, they play down. I'm not overly scared of Tommy DeVe DeVito. Uh, now, Saquon a little bit, and I I'm not really overly concerned with their wide receivers either. So, I don't know. I just, like I said, on paper, you would think that this would be a cakewalk. It should be, you know, a a an easy win, but you know like every like it's always been said it's every given sunday who knows what's going to happen yeah absolutely you, like you said on paper um simulations whatever you want to call it this game should be pretty pretty nice walk in the park uh uh for the packers but this has all the hallmarkings of a trap game for green bay where Green Bay is coming off of really back-to-back -back weeks against what should have been um, superior opponents that they've come out with big season-defining wins in. Um, the Giants, meanwhile, are at the bottom of the league in a lot of categories. They're coming off their bye, and you know how. And it's a road game for the Packers. So how do all of those factors? You know, this is a like we said all year. This is um, a season of learning and growth for this young Packers team. And this is a good test for them, honestly, is to come off of those emotional, uh, mental highs of coming off, you know, getting back to 500, scraping, clawing your way to playoff contention and controlling your own playoff destiny and seeing what they're going to do with it in this uh, this setting. So um, big test for the Packers. I know people are going to say like, yeah, but hey, when you've been, you're being expected to win a game for the first time in, geez, months at this point. Um, that's a big hurdle for a young team, so it'll be really fun to see how they come out on Monday night. Um, little housekeeping for the Packers. Uh, they have not practiced as of um, when we're recording this on Wednesday night. Uh, so no updates on injuries yet at this time, but they did sign some players, uh, make some roster moves. So cornerback David Long from Michigan, um, he was added to the active roster, signed off of waivers from the Raiders. <laughs> uh, former third round um, pick, I think, for the Rams, wasn't he? Yep. So he was there. He was on the Super Bowl winning team a couple years ago. Um, he was a good, you know, he's um he's not the biggest guy. He actually measures up uh, kind of similarly to um, two guys on the roster in Jair and Corey Ballantyne. He um, is a similar athlete to both if by you go by Rask cards, he's actually much more like Ballantyne, but he did test out similarly to Jair in terms of um, length, uh, arm length, height. Um, not He's like seven hundredths of a second slower than um, Jair, but he's a little more explosive and a little bit um, quicker in the agilities too, I think, actually. So um, another, you know, another potential project player. Um, always good to have more bodies in the cornerback room. And then the one that I'm kind of excited about is a guy that I've liked since he was in college. Uh, James Robinson released from the practice squad and Kenyon Drake from Alabama and like five different NFL teams has been added to the practice squad. Um, that one was fun because uh, Drake broke the news himself via his Twitter and Instagram accounts. So, um, but kind of interesting to see, you know, they, they gave Robinson some handle, some handoffs in the Sunday night game. It, I don't put it too much on him. There wasn't much room for him, but I think they're well, yeah. looking to get a little mm -hmm. bit of a different looking back. Drake is more of a third down change of pace kind of back. But yeah, your impressions, Joe. Well, no, I was just going to say we we kind of talked about this on the the review after the win that everybody seems to be writing James Robinson like, oh, well, he looked horrible. He looked terrible. And it's like, how can you judge it? there was nothing you could judge it off of because 
he had two carries and one catch. And you, you, you can't judge anything off of that. Like you said, there was no, it wasn't all on him. You know, there was the blocking missed. The defense, you know, played well against it. So there was nothing he could do. But, you know, I, I obviously he was just going to be a, 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 a relief type guy because, you know, AJ got the bulk of the carries. But, yeah, Kenyon Drake, you know, he's he's got ability still. He is getting up a little bit older side a little bit. But I also have to think that this doesn't bode well for Aaron Jones at the moment because Kenyon is kind of like an Aaron Jones type back. So it makes me wonder if this is not looking where he's going to be back for the Giants game. Or maybe if he does come back, it's on like a really limited basis until they get the full, you know, readout on how he's doing. So I think the big play everybody remembers is Kenyon was the one that caught the or had the touchdown in the Dolphins versus Patriots game on that hook and ladder type deal. So, you know, it's a big signing. Uh, in a way, I, I, I see too many people trying to compare this to the 2010 Super Bowl year where, oh, well, you know, this is kind of like the Howard Green signing or the the uh, uh, Eric Walden signing. It's like, no, come on, guys, calm down a little bit. You know, to be honest, he's probably not going to get any play time. If he does, it's going to be very limited this coming week. And, you know, outside of that, he's going to get limited rotation anyway, unless there's a major injury somewhere. No, so. that's the way I look at it, too, is that if he plays, something has gone catastrophically wrong at this point. I I just think I agree with you. I, I think more than anything, it's they're looking for a different kind of back than what Robinson brought to the table at this point. They're looking you know, more for guys who hypothetically could um, factor into the pass game. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to read into terms of what this means for Jones or not. I wonder if releasing Robinson means that Dylan came out healthier than they expected him to, you know, because Robinson always was more like kind of the same kind of back that Dylan was anyway. You know, they're more like strong runner types than like get out in the pass game kind. So it'll be interesting to see. But honestly, he's got to learn the playbook. I know he played for McDaniel, but I don't know how long that or I don't actually if he did or not. But um, I don't think he played there. No, yeah, no, no. He was with the Ravens last year, so yeah, no, even even yeah. more so. So yeah, it's gonna take him time to get acclimated. Um, so yeah, so I like I said, I think this is just like a stir the bottom of the roster kind of thing. I wouldn't look too much into it. Well, it's a security blanket, you know. Yeah. Like I said, I think this doesn't bode well for maybe Aaron Jones playing Monday. This, you know, they'll bring Kenyon up for. Uh, one of his call-ups just to have him on roster in case something happens. I also would assume that this means that they're a little bit more comfortable with Ellis. Uh, uh, Merriweather. Uh, yeah, Merriweather. I was going to say Merriweather, but for some reason it didn't seem right. So, because we haven't seen anything out of him yet, but I, I really think this – both Kenyon, well, honestly, I can't say. I don't know what Ellis is. What do you know about Ellis Merriweather? Is he like a scat back type? Is he a thumper? Little more of like a kind of like what we were expecting to get out of um, what's his fate out of um, um, uh, our draft pick. Shoot, I'm, I'm blanking on his name. Oh, Lou Nichols. Uh, Lou Nichols, yeah, kind of that kind of runner. So, um, more more like that, not not like a speed or athletic kind. I think he tested kind of similarly to Wilson, actually. So, yeah, more more along the lines of those two guys than like a true like just flyer kind of athlete. So, okay. um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I I don't remember Merriweather. I know he spent time with the Saints, but that's about it. But uh, it's kind of surprising we haven't seen anything out of him, considering he's been on the practice squad for a little bit longer than a guy like James Robinson or or even like Kenyon Drake. But I. I don't know. I, I, I'm hoping that my biggest fear right now is I have a feeling AJ is going to drop off. 
because right now he's playing above what he had been playing before. So I just have this feeling that whether it's this next game or another game coming up, he's just, he's going to fall off. So we need something there in case that happens. Yeah. Never have, never can have too many bodies. And like we've said before, that's something that Goot has done a really good job of just churning the bottom of the roster to um, make sure that, you know, they're just constantly bringing in new bodies. Like you're not expecting to necessarily find diamonds in the rough, but you, if you find functional bodies off the street, that's all you can ask for with, you know, those practice squad spots. And then if they need to be called up to be those like spots, 42 to 53 on the active roster kind of things. So um, figure that long, probably, I wonder if this means that um, Robert Rochelle is a little bit more dinged up because um, they probably are bringing long in. Cause I know Rochelle missed the last game and he was missing practice last week. So could be kind of a fill in situation like that as well. So that'll, We'll see what the practice report means to, to hold for us this week. Um, we'll get to one of the Giants' big ones because they because they're coming off their bye. They did have a practice already, um, but we'll get into that when we get into the defense. But the New York Giants are on the are on the docket for the Packers, the thirty <laughs> second ranked team in DVOA this season, thirty um, first in offense, twenty sixth in defense, and twenty third on special teams. Like we said, they are coming off their bye. Dable is a, you know, he not so much right now because his team is struggling, but Dable, you know, as, at least a couple years ago, right before he got hired and when he got hired by the Giants, um, he was regarded as one of the brightest offensive minds in the NFL. So um, you guarantee he's like throwing some things together. Um, it remains but right to be now seen, the though. Giants are kind of like a black hole like the Browns are right now, where yeah. it doesn't matter how the coach is beforehand. Once he gets into the system, it just kind of like disappears. They really haven't had a solid coach out there since maybe Coughlin. And even Coughlin towards the end was... Uh, Old man screaming at a cloud a little bit. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. So I, I know it's everything's kind of going against Dable, but... It, I don't know. I This is one of those where from the outside looking in, you kind of question like, is there going to be an organization against the coach kind of thing? Or is Dayball being given a clean slate because, you know, Jones isn't necessarily his quarterback kind of thing and stuff. And um, it's not necessarily his fault that, um, you know, the offense tanked or anything like that because of the injuries and stuff. So remains to be I seen, you know. The the defensive coordinator get into it not too long ago too. Yeah, like, the sideline. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, the whole thing is getting. I, yeah, it's like it's I said difficult. that, and that kind of you you go the tinfoil hat route, and it's like, oh, does Dable have marching orders that ah, oh, like it's okay if the team doesn't do well, and Martin Dale is a defensive coordinator is like, well, screw that, like I still don't want to just suck kind of thing and all, but. Who knows? You know, like, we're going to see what this team... I expect the Giants to come out, you know, with some fight, some vim, and some vigor to start the game. And that's why I think it's big for the Packers to... More on offense, because I don't... I don't I'm not putting the cart before the horse on Barry to play a shutdown series or anything like that. But you want to kind of, like, douse the flames early as much as you can on either side of the ball, because... Well, this, if they like you said, this going... is a team... Yeah, if, oh, no, no. if the offense can keep going like they have been the last few weeks where they just, you know, go out on it with like their pants are on fire then and score points early, then and you have to put it on the Giants' offense to come back, then of course it's going to be a cakewalk. But LaFleur is going to have to not play down to comp the competition. He's going to have to go out there and – live by his all gas no or all fucking gas no breaks or all gas no fucking breaks or however he put it and just yep. not give a let up yeah no that's going to be the key to the game but sticking with the giants offense this is a rough offense right now like i said fueled partly because um daniel jones is down for the season with an acl but even before they weren't a great unit but they are dead last in yardage per game um they're only scoring 13 points per game. I'm not sure who they're ahead of, but they're actually only 31st in that regard. Um, the ones to keep an eye on, um, I don't expect them to pass. They're the last, they're the last passing offense in the league at hundred, just over 150 yards. 
the one to keep an eye on, like you kind of noted already. So they're rushing for 107 rush yards per game, 18th in the league. And Saquon is, you know, he's on pace to have a thousand yards, but it's not a special season in any way, really. It's only averaging a little over four yards a carry, only has one touchdown. And like you said, that's how you get bogged down in this game is if Barry is afraid of a bad quarterback, which Tommy DeVito is, you know, I don't even want to say he's a quadruple A quarterback to go in baseball terms, but um, the, like, I think you and I said this is kind of redux of the Atlanta game, honestly. And it's like, and this one's even worse because they don't have a Kyle Pitts or a, um, a, a Mike London or um, any of the skill position players that are on the, the Falcons. Um, it's basically Saquon in the high, you know, they have the husk of Darren Waller. I, I think he's fine, but without a quarterback to throw him the ball, he's kind of useless out there. And then their leading receiver is Darius Slayton, who has 435 receiving yards. So, Well, yeah, um, the only one that I would worry about there in the receiving core is the rookie, Hyatt, because, mm. because of his ability. You know, not because he's been producing, but just because of his stretch the field type ability. And that that's what makes me worry with Barry, is that he's going to see, oh, that's a guy who runs a legit 4-3 a low four three forty, so I'm not gonna get beat over the top. And it's like you're gonna, so you're gonna let you know as many plays as the Packers defense has made the last two weeks, they've been they've been shredded on the ground. They've given up three hundred yards the past two games combined. Um, and it's not like those are all coming late in the game when the Packers are up like three scores and um, you know they're they're just like ah just run it like kill the clock for us thank you very much those are those rush yards are coming within the flow of the game you know um, Isaiah Pacheco was gashing us for six yards a carry and then yeah I know they stiffened up when they got in the red zone but you know it, it would be nice to get some stops in the middle of the field to get some punts and get no. your offense back on the field quicker kind of thing. It, did they activate Waller? Because according to their their home page, he's still on the injured reserve. I haven't seen an update on that. Um, I know they have Terod Taylor, who is designated to return. So it's all possible he could be quarterbacking yeah. Monday night. But according to the website, Waller is still on injured reserve. So we wouldn't even yeah, have to so deal with him. They are expecting him to practice this week. It looks like. Okay. Well, uh, if he's just now starting to practice, I, yeah, would maybe not. Say... Cause it, cause he's been out since October with a bad hamstring. So maybe not, but yeah, they, like we're just identifying guys who could be problems. And if he, if Waller does play, that's a problem. You know, like I said, maybe he's not, but it's another guy that's going to add, for all intents and purposes, fear into Barry's um, play calling equation. So, um, like I said, the the way you lose this game is you let Saquon get going. So, um, it would be nice if you can get one or both of Stokes and Jair back this game because this would be a good one to get them into if you can kind of thing because this isn't yeah. the greatest receiver core kind of thing. So... Um, the Jair thing is really confusing because he was practicing all week last week and they still didn't play him. The, and... good, the good thing is it's the shoulder. And so I'm thinking he dislocated it or something. And it's a whole matter of like with shoulder dislocations, you reach this tipping point of where like from what I've been, what it's been described to me, including by my brother who is a, who is a doctor, but so you're trying to hit this threshold point where when you hit this certain re-strengthening threshold, the likelihood of re-dislocating it drops significantly. But if you go before that, the, if you dislocate it again, you set yourself back to zero kind of thing and stuff. So I, I don't know exactly what the injury was or if it's an AC joint issue that could lead to a dislocation. So it's I, I would think if it was an heard, AC joint thing, he wouldn't be practicing. Yeah, exactly. So I, I do. That's why I think it's a dislocation kind of thing. But I, honestly, we've gotten good reps from Carrington Valentine and Corey Valentine. Oh, I, we yeah, definitely so, have. But think about what the defense would be if we had our all pro cornerback yeah, out there. Exactly. And we can move Carrington, not Carrington, uh, 
uh, Corey to maybe the more the nickel type or use him as like the, as like a, a fourth C, you know, a dime type or whatever. Yeah. I, I mean, there's ways to get these guys out on the field, or if you're wanting to give Jair, you know, just put him on a snap count. But I, I just, I, the big thing is when Stokes comes back, don't put him on fucking special teams because that's what <laughs> did it the last time. So yeah, I, but yeah. it just, like I said, the thing with Jair has just been really confusing that, if he's not able to play, how is he fully participating in practice? Because even though you're not really hitting in practice, you're still putting the same type of stress as you would in a game on that yeah. shoulder. It's got to be some kind of, like I said, that's where I'm thinking it's like a strength and like a testing strength kind of thing and stuff. So time will tell. Like, I. I know this is going to sound bad, but the team didn't think it was going anywhere the last couple weeks. And you can say what you want about that, but they need Jair to be on the next great Packers team. And, you know, if they make the playoffs, obviously you want him out there, but you don't want this to be... You remember, like, when Rashawn got drafted, it was like, oh my God, his shoulder, his shoulder is a problem, his shoulder is a problem, it's going to be a problem for his whole career kind of thing. And his shoulder has never really popped up on the injury report, I think, except for early in his rookie season kind of thing. So I think they are trying to manage around that, get, you know, make sure that it doesn't become one of those repetitive issues. That's just my take on it. But I know well, that no, a I lot like of people are that. questioning. Yeah. Well, so, I get but I don't, that too. It, I just... it does. It is a confusing one where it's like, okay, like, and then it doesn't help Jair that Schneidman last week before the, the, um, the Lions game, there was like, oh yeah, he's about to play. <laughs> and he's expected to play today, whether it was the, um, or not the Lions game or the Chargers game. One of those, they shine. It was like, oh yeah, they're expecting him to play today. And then he's like, eh, he's inactive. And it's like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I, I think Stokes could probably have a good shot at coming in just to start getting him some, some snaps. But I, I mean, I'm 50, 50 on him just because one, he's been out for so long that you just want to get him, you know, conditioned. So I, you know, as much as I'd like to see him come out for this game, I could also be all right saying, all right, just let's keep getting him in practice reps so we can start getting conditioned a little bit more. Yep. So time will tell. And then the big one that came out on the offensive side is that Evan Neal, the Giants right tackle has not practiced. So he didn't practice before their bye. He missed their week 11 game against the Patriots. And it sounds like from their unofficial practice, because they don't have to release a report since they're coming off the bye, but he and going to the defensive side, Dexter Lawrence, both did not practice earlier this week. So those will be big ones on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, you've seen Rashawn and Preston and Lucas and Inogbury all have, you know, their games have ticked up the last couple of weeks. So um, it'd be kind of big to see another team who's got question marks at offensive tackle. Um, and then on the defensive side, Dexter Lawrence is probably their most important defensive player. But that's not saying much when this is the 28th ranked uh, defense in terms of yards allowed per game. Um, Giants are leaking 364 yards per game, 24 points per game. That's 26th. Um, and basically you can kind of get it how you want it on them. Um, the only ranked 20th against the pass, but that's because I think teams are finding a lot of success against them on the ground. Um, and that's compounded if Dexter Lawrence is limited or, um, out with that hamstring issue. Like I said, so he was. Lawrence was doubtful their week 11 game against the Patriots and still was missing some practices coming out of the bye. So that's a big one to keep an eye on. Um, that would be pretty um, all, you know, joking aside, massive for the Packers, because I know that as much as they haven't run the ball well this season, LaFleur would like to get the ground game going. And we saw it against, you know, a Chiefs defense that's really good, but is a little soft on the interior. So if Lawrence is limited or not able to play this week, that would be pretty big for the Packers. But the if Lawrence is down or limited, the guy to keep an eye on is um, Kayvon Thibodeau, who, um, you know, I feel like he's more hype than reality in terms of a player, but he does have 11 sacks on the season. The thing is, though, the Giants only have 21 as a team, so he has 
over half of their sack production. And um, Deontay Banks is a cornerback, a rookie cornerback who has emerged this season and is playing. I think he's up there on some defensive rookie of the year charts. Um, they're expecting him to make one of the all rookie teams. And like we kind of mentioned, Wink Martindale's name earlier. Um, he's another guy kind of from the same I, the same philosophy of, of Spagnolo, who he's going to blitz. And unlike the Chiefs, who have better sec- second level, third level players, the Giants don't really have that. So I expect Martindale to blitz a lot. I mean, we remember how it was last year when we played him in London. And then when we played the Ravens in 2021, uh, when Martindale was still their defensive coordinator. So Lot, expect lots of pressure another good test for love this week but um like you said earlier joe you just hope to see the offense move the ball against this giants defense going into this game yeah i mean another guy to kind of keep an eye out for is one of their safeties xavier mckinney uh you know it's a guy that a lot of packer fans were hoping that maybe we could make a move for him at the at the trade deadline uh I would I would worry more about him with the deep stuff because he is kind of a ball hawk type safety. So, you know, if Jordan gets rushed and he just lets one fly, you know, I, I would worry that maybe McKinney would would be in the vicinity just because of how he plays. But I, again, I, I'm not as much as I would love to say that I'm not worried about this game, I am kind of worried about this game. Cause again, you know, they, they play down to their competition, but you know, hopefully Jordan keeps his streak going and you know, this offense can really get rolling. I think they said that, uh, Christians, uh, uh, what, Christian Watson's was a hamstring, but, they didn't it's figure not as it was too serious. It was. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's a good sign. I mean, this could be a, t- a cu- in a way, this could be a game that they set them out of and just roll with what they've got. Uh, here's something that I wanted to ask, and I didn't, I haven't asked it of anybody yet, but it just came to my mind because I, like I said, I was listening to Lombardi's bar earlier and they had Matt Schneidman on there and, uh, they were, he kind of brought up the name, but Samari Torre, is he just basically done now? Because Heath has kind of jumped him in uh, the depth chart. You you really don't see anything out of him. He's not even getting reps at like you know punt or kick return anymore, like he had been. So is he just like taking up a roster spot in case of? Pretty much at this point, I think um, (laughs) for all intents and purposes, um, I think this is just a sign that DuBose, like just for instance, DuBose isn't quite ready kind of thing um, to just take a roster spot. So I I think DuBose, Melton, whichever one of the young guys that they really like, who they've kept around. um, I know Melton is like the same, you know, he's been on the roster the same amount as Toure. um, And obviously DuBose was their seventh round pick this year, but yeah, I, I think he's, you know, that's the thing. You know, a lot of people have been hyping up Toure all um, off season and stuff. But the big thing with him is that he's not any different or better than what he was last year. And that's, you know, he's a guy that he's a smart player. Um, he knows how to find open spots between zone coverages, but he doesn't make plays when it's conde- con- um, when he's in, in uh, good man coverage. He can't make contested catches. And yeah, like you pointed out, he's not a special teams contributor. So um, Heath has just completely passed him up on the depth chart. And like I said, I think it's just a matter of um, you're getting to the point in the season where, um, you know, like let's say Melton or Dubose starts to, you know, catch up and they want to get a look at one of those guys. Let's say like Watson's out, right? And you activate Melton this week to be a secondary like deep threat jet guy so that you know, you're not, especially if Reed is still going to be kind of limited this week because of the chest injury. So let's say that Melton's up this week. It's probably up over DuBose at this point. And then, you know, you're you're inactivating um, Watson and stuff. So I, it's one of those where I don't think they're going to like just elevate one of DuBose or Melton right away because I think they're holding, Toure's spot is now eyeballed as a like, 
hey, like if we have an injury somewhere else or someone else gets cut and we can waiver claim or something, that's the roster spot we're going to use. Like when you're a healthy scratch for like three or four weeks in a row, you know you're on the you're on the short end of the stick at that point. Well, how many times has Melton been called up? Because it's been at least twice. I well, okay. So last week he was signed to the roster. So if he has a call, if he I can't remember if he got elevated before, but if he does, it's only been once because the last time he was on game day, I think on what was that on Thanksgiving, they had signed him to the active roster. So that one um doesn't count against his three. So it's he's either got all three or he's got two left. Well, no, I know he's got he's been at least one time. I thought it was two times before this signed to active. So I, I'd have to go back and look, but I know it's at least been once. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to get see how many games he's played in. Uh, well, now this is just once, but I know he was called up one other time because they didn't use him at all. And he right. was just on the he was just on the call up. Yeah, so but I'd have to go back and look, but I, I just was curious because they're gonna have to keep an eye on that too. Uh, if and I think well I knew it, you kind of knew it, a lot of other people knew it. But there was that side of people that were too excited about Grant DeBose that they were like, oh, well, he's going to contribute. Guys, he came from Charlotte. It, it's going to take him a bit to get used to the NFL, so I don't expect him to contribute at all until maybe next year. That's the thing. And so <clears throat> just looking at the roster counts and kind of knowing what they like to do, but so with – or with – um. Toure on the roster, they're still at six wide receivers. Yeah. So um, you get to the point where, let's say Musgrave can come back. Toure might be the cut to get Musgrave back on the active roster. Like, that's one of those kind of Dubois moves. could be too, because I have a Dubois feeling. could be too. But I, I, I think he's I, getting I, cut for your cousin, so. <laughs> hey, I want to put this out there. I haven't been able to find it. But if anybody knows how to get a hold of Henry Pearson, let me know, because I would love to get him on the show. I don't care if he's still with the Packers when he when it happens or not. It would be great to get him on here. So, uh, the listeners, if, if you got a connection, let me know. Yep. So it's um it's gonna be it's gonna be. But yep, like you said, that's the nagging question that I have, and like I said, that's why I'm excited to see what this team is going to do because for the first time since that Falcons game or I guess does it like you don't think of it that way because they blew them but the games against um what's Whoa, it called the Raiders there, and um the Raiders and Broncos it's interesting because they played all these bad teams on the road so it's like doubly a learning because like you said one they played down to their up and down to their competition and two, you're doing that on the road. So um, kind of two birds they got to knock out this week. But I, I am excited to see what they're going to do because, yes, as much as they played down to competition, that was while they were still having a lot of their behind the scenes, like um, behind the scenes and, uh, you know, inner their infrastructure issues, you know, with guys not knowing all the plays, guys running the wrong routes, things like that. So, um I wanted to see how different it looks now that this offense is clicking a lot better. Guys know where they're supposed to be and that the confidence level across the board is just that much higher right now. So um, that's, that's my thing to look forward to, but um, anything else you got on the giants or just kind of going into um, what we're expecting to see going into the WIT game? Not really. I, you know, I'll be honest. I haven't really paid attention much to the giants this year. I, I know the, the hot thing right now is uh, Tommy DeVito and what's he doing, the gabagool, you know, thing after touchdowns or whatever. And I he's not looked horrible. I think when I looked up his stats, 
it listed he had a QB rating of like 92 and a half or something like that. And he's thrown nine touchdowns with only three interceptions. So, you know, for what he is, he's not been bad. And for what the team is, he's not been bad. And let's face it, the Packers have had a horrible history with backup quarterbacks the last few years. My kind of hope is that Tyrod gets out there and plays because I have a feeling they'd be able to play better against Tyrod than they would uh, DeVito right now. And that's another reason why I kind of hope one of, if not both, Jair and Stokes are back because then they could play their their whatever you call it, the the uh, shell coverage that you like to that you like to call it more because then they have their better players out there and it's and it's not a slide against Corey or Carrington. I I love what they're both doing. Carrington's potential is skyrocketing with each and every week. Corey, I, I think I don't think he's I think he's pretty much reached his ceiling, but you know that's pretty good. So you know what they're getting out of him right now. But when you look at it, would you rather have Jair or Corey? Would you yep. rather have Stokes or Carrington? Yep. And, so. and, and and that's the big thing. So uh, but I, I would feel mm-hmm. a lot better if we had those options on the table. You know, okay, well, we're only gonna give Jair and Eric a couple, you know, on a pitch count. That's fine because we got Corey and Carrington works for me and it, the sooner you get those especially jair like you said stokes it's hard to tell because he hasn't played in over a year at this point but with this team in position to make the playoffs you want your best players out there and you don't want jair going out there cold turkey kind of thing when he hasn't played for over a month and a half at that point so um got he needs a ramp up period too um and speaking of those two our yes knows for the week Yes or no on Jair Alexander playing for this week? Yes. <laughs> I, I really do. I, I, I think, and I, like I said, it's, and I know you were, ta- we've talked about it already and there's not much more to say, but it's just been really weird that he's been fully practicing, but not, you know, playing. So I think this is the week to bring him back. Like you said so earlier, too. it's the, it's just, this is the type of game you bring him back for. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I, I think so too. It's especially before you get into kind of the heavier parts, not heavier, but um, just teams with better receiving options that aren't necessarily good either. But yeah, I, I would think that you would see him back this week. Eric Stokes. Yes or no. I'm, <laughs> As much, I, I, like I said earlier, I'm kind of 50-50 on it, but I'm going to go ahead and say no just because I think that it, just to give him a little bit more time, obviously we don't know what the injury report looks like at the moment. If, if, he, if it said he was full participant, then I'd be like, okay, yeah, for sure, he, he's going to go. But I think this gives him just gives him a little bit more time to get into – not that he's not in shape, but get him a little bit more condition since he's missed so much time this year. Yeah, completely agree. Um, I, I'm i going to err on the side of um, that he will be activated and will be on the fifth the game day roster. Um, he was limited all last week, and I think he was doubtful out of precaution. So um, I, I think we'll see him back on the field this week for the Packers. Aaron Jones. I'm going to say no. I I just I I know they're saying it's a slight meniscus and that's usually a two to four week type thing. And this is what week three. This is gonna three. be week three. Yeah. So I, I could see a no and just say, all right, we'll come back the next game. Yeah. Uh this is the kind this is exactly the kind of one that they're gonna be um cautious with. And it's so weird to talk about this in contrasting views, but where I th- where I said Jair needs the reps, they want Jones as fresh as possible if they're rolling right. into the playoffs. So yeah, it's it's that weird dichotomy between the two positions. But yeah, I think that they're 
if if they're going to make the playoffs, they want as healthy of a Jones as they want. And that's going to curtail over into the next guy in Christian Watson, who I'll just lead off. I think he's sitting this week. I, I just think that there's no point in putting him out there this week. I think unless something changes, I I think with what they said with the ham, it was a hamstring. But the way he was moving around, I'm gonna, I was, I'm thinking it's more cramps, and it just because the way he pulled up, it just seemed like you know when you get one of them Charlie horses in your calf, and you just oh whatever. But I'm gonna say no just because you know with all the other guys on the roster, he can take a break. And with how much trouble he had coming back from it to start the season too, like right. just, just don't play with fire at that point. That's that's kind of my thinking on that. And so that's it for our yes nos this week. And let's tail it into your over unders this week. What do you got for us this week, Joe? Well, let's. I, I'm not going to do yardage because that I don't know what the weather's going to be like for them on Monday night, but. We'll go with touchdown. So two and a half TDs for Jordan Love. And so far, what is it? He's gone the last three weeks throwing at least three of them. Yep. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yep. Three weeks in a row with three passing touchdowns. I am going to say, yes, he is going to have. Th- and you didn't say passing touchdown. So I think he'll have three. <laughs> total well it's have over three. under two and a half so yes yeah, so i'll go over, over under- i'll go over okay. yeah i'll take the over on it too and i think the caveat is going to be like i said last week where i think they're going to hit a couple of them little pop passes maybe one to read and you know maybe they get uh wicks involved in the the little end around type stuff and that'll kind of bump up his stats a little bit. So I'll go the over with it too. Um, my next one is two and a half turnovers for the defense. I'm going to say under. Um, as much as they're doing stuff, I think it's still a little more, I don't want to say smoke and mirrors, but it's more guys making plays on their own than it is like the defensive structure is creating them well now the way that i worded it it's just turnover so that could be fumbles that could be interceptions that could be whatever so i'm gonna go over because i think they're gonna get enough pressure on devito that it whether it's like strip sacks or you know interceptions or whatever or even if it's like a bobbled uh, uh uh snap or whatever because he's rattled I I just think that with the pressure that they can get, that it'll be over. And my last one, I I just threw this out there because I I really had a hard time thinking of what the over-under should be this week. Uh, One and a half TDs for Jaden Reed. I'm going to go under. I think that um, he's going to play, but I think they're they're trying to limit his reps and touches because they're trying to have him out there, but also um, not overuse him kind of thing. So I am thinking under this week. Well, since I said no on Watson, they're going to look to somebody else. And, you know, obviously there's Dobbs, there's Wicks, there's Heath, there's all these other guys that is possible. But I think in just that short game or even the long game, if Watson isn't there, they're going to, or Watson isn't there, they're going to need somebody to go deep in the next logical choice is Jaden Reed. And I think they're at least going to hit one deep on with him. And then he's going to get, like I said, one of them pop passes. So that gives him two. So that's an easy over for one and a half. I hope somebody does because that means that we're scoring a bunch of points. But, Joe, anything else on the Giants this week? Or just um, any other lingering thoughts for us as we go into this one, as we get try to climb over 500? I just wish it wasn't Monday night. <laughs> um, I, I I don't know. For some reason, I don't like these late night games. I, I just, I, it, not that I wake up, have to wake up early the next morning or anything. I just, I, I don't know. For some reason, I don't like the late, late night games. I like the noon or the late afternoon games. So, but other than that, 
Uh, the one thing I do want to say is now for the website, and Mike will pitch it later in the outro, but you can sign up on the website and you'll get an email notification anytime that a, a new article gets dropped. So if you sign up and next time an article drops, you'll get an email no notification and you can check out the the new postings. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yep. Um, like Joe said, please give us, please follow the website, ohanapackers.org. Um, that's going to wrap it up for today, but um, we're going to all going to watch the Packers hopefully go to seven and six and continue to bolster their playoff projection. But that's Iowa Joe. I'm Mike Kawano. Please give us a follow on our Twitter accounts at Kawano Mike and at Iowa underscore Joe 86. Follow the pod at ohana underscore packers like i said website ohanapackers.org as joe mentioned please sign up for the um subscribe to the website to get updates when we post um blog posts um also you can access the streams of the every podcast episode on there um we're trying to get more guests on as the season goes and especially as we get into the off season but um please give us a follow and a like on any of your favorite podcasting apps please give us any positive or negative feedback comments we do appreciate all of those as we said this is a big one for the packers they've come they've come off as david defeating goliath the last two weeks now it's time for them to put the hammer down on a team that they should beat pretty easily so big growth moment for the packers that's going to do it for this week. Uh, we want to just say go pack go and aloha.